Okay, today we're going to learn a bit about using the Smith chart to, make, to design matching networks. So a Smith chart maps a complex impedance into a complex reflection coefficient, which can be plotted on a, a polar-like chart. Gamma is a ratio of the impedance of interest minus the characteristic impedance over the impedance of interest plus the characteristic impedance. The characteristic impedance Z0 is just any arbitrary impedance. Typically it's 50 ohms and it can be complex if we want it to be. One of the things that's nice about the use of reflection coefficient rather than impedance is that reflection coefficient is always bound between 0 and 1, whereas impedance can take on any value and infinitely many values. So this is a Smith chart. Uh, sometimes we call this an emittance chart because it has both impedance and admittance on a single chart. The impedance chart is in red and the admittance chart is in green. And so we're going to look at a few points of interest on the Smith chart. And the first point of interest is the center of the chart. And normally the center of the chart is where our characteristic impedance is, Z0. The chart is generally divided into two halves through the center. The upper half is the inductive region. The lower half is the capacitive region. The center line that I've drawn that divides the chart would represent ideal resistor. Next, we'll look at the, the way that components move on the chart. So in general, inductors will move upward into the inductive region on the chart. So I've drawn a line for a series inductor. A shunt inductor is going to move upwards on a line of constant conductance. A series capacitor will move downwards on a line of constant resistance. And a shunt capacitor will move downwards on a line of constant conductance. Often when we plot impedances on the chart, we normalize the impedance. So I wrote above that gamma was equal to Z minus Z naught divided by Z plus Z naught. And this would be equivalent if we were to normalize by the factor Z naught. And we would come up with our normalized reflection coefficient, lowercase Z minus one over lowercase Z plus one. 